Hey guys, in today's video I wanted to show you how you can create your own sub boom without necessarily having to have a big trailer hits library. Let's dive in. Okay, so here we go. All I'm going to do is load up the ultra beat, which is uh, Logic's, one of Logic's default. Um, my brain has left the building. One of Logic's default drum machines that comes with it. So, you know, it's got Boutique 808, which sound fine. So let's use this. The idea is we want to create a sub boom or some kind of like distant boom easily. So I'm going to start with a kick. That's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to load up, say, Logic's Special Space Designer Reverb. Now, what I would like to do is, what we're trying to do here, sub-booms, they need to have sort of low frequency information, and they need to be, sound like they're really far away, so they need to be in a long reverb. That's the first thing to establish. So let's go into large, let's go into outdoor spaces, and we can go, in fact, no, I'm actually going to go indoor, even though this would be, but I'm going to go for a 14 second dome. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, but what we want to think about is a couple of things. We want to reduce some of the high end information from the uh, audio. So we're going to keep this on and we're going to take some of that down. There we go. Let's reduce the dry a little bit, send it further back. Right. I'm pretty happy with that. It's got a lot of the information I want, but the original sample isn't quite working. Uh, and I quite like this. I was thinking to myself, do I stop the video and start again? No, we're all creatives here. We all realize that sometimes the sample we choose is not the right one. So I'm actually going to load up the uh, Deep House kit. <laughs> and there you have it. That does the job. It doesn't need to be a 14 second dome. It can be, let's say, even an eight second would do, or, you know, we can reduce it. So let's go to big old church. Okay, let's take, try, take the dry down. Okay, we need to make sure we've got the output EQ on. Nice. Okay, now what you'll see here, this is the issue we have with using convolution reverbs, is when does the reverb kick in? When does the attack of it kick in? So we want it to be, there we go. We don't want it to be like, boom, gah. we don't want there to be a delay between the hit and the reverb, because then it creates this weird sense. We want it to be like that. Business. That's it. It's quite loud. See, I'm pretty chuffed with this. Again, you don't have to use convolution. You can use, I'm going to go into uh, Sound Toys and use a plate, little plate, one of my favorite reverbs, uh, because it just doesn't have any color. We don't want a low cut. Now, the issue here is because the little plate doesn't have a high cut, so you would need to add a single band EQ, high cut. <sighs> there we go. It's a really simple way to start off with your own cinematic sub booms, just by taking a decent sounding kick, putting it in a big reverb and filtering off the high frequencies. We filter off the high frequencies because uh, they don't travel as far as low frequencies. And this sub boom is kind of intended to be further away or underground where the high frequencies would have been filtered out. And this is a fantastic way to add emphasis and to bring your track this sense of scale and weight. It's just brilliant, especially at the start of the track, especially in stop down, especially at the end of the track. 
uh, because obviously we don't throw in too much sub information with the sub booms when the whole track is you know going crazy so i hope you found this helpful and and i'll see you in the next video